All right. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us. During this webinar, I'm going to quickly cover some tips and features in iRISE that are related to collaboration and managing requirements in user stories. Uh, there is a lot you can do in the iRISE platform, I realize that, and it's easy to miss things. So hopefully at the end of this, you'll learn a few new things, or maybe we'll just refresh your memory. So let's start in Editor for just a moment. And you'll see up in the top right-hand corner here, if you have a team or enterprise plan, you'll see who's included on the project. And if anyone is online, you'll also see that, and you'll see their icon just to the left here. And if you mouse over them, you'll also see the various ways that you can contact them, including things like Slack and email and Skype. So now let's move to Player. This is where you preview your prototypes and collaborate and have conversations and gather and manage your requirements, of course, and where you view them alongside the functionality that they describe. So let's start in the comments panel. So in this panel, um, you can actually at mention anyone on a project. So um, if you do that, what you're going to do is um, it's going to send an email with a link back to that comment. And if they click it, they're going to be taken to this page and that comment is going to be highlighted along with any element in the prototype that you have that comment tied to. And you can also get a link directly to a comment or requirement, which will behave similarly. So if you add a requirement and then associate it to a widget on the page, after I do that, I can click this drop down here and I can select the get link. So then you can send it to whoever you'd like to alert or review. And just like the at mentions link, when they click on it, it's going to highlight the requirement or comment for them. All right, so this next tip is actually a simple one, but I don't think that everybody knows about it, so I'm going to mention it here. You can actually minimize this top bar in player. To do that, you just select minimize toolbar. And then you can click this tab if you want it back. So the last tip in player that I'm going to give you is that you can turn the active element highlights on and off. Um, so most of the time you probably want the highlights on as it allows reviewers to click anywhere on the page and it gives them an understanding of where the interactive areas are, um, which will um, show in a yellow highlight. But you can turn them off. You can have them show only on click or you can have them always highlighted. All right, so now let's jump over to Manager. So the first thing I'll show you here is how to edit your schema. Now iRise comes with a basic schema that includes some of the most popular attributes like type and owner and release and iteration, risk and priority. But one of the important aspects of using iRise is thinking about your process and then customizing your schema to fit the way that your team works and tracks the attributes that you need to track. And the way that you customize your schema is you use this top right drop down here and select Edit Requirement Attributes. Then if you want to update or edit any of the existing attributes, you just click the Edit button on the bottom left. And then you can rename or you can reorder or you can delete and add new options. You can also edit the type of attribute that it is, whether you want something like text or long text or maybe a date or an attachment. You can edit that as well. Now for existing categories, you'll see a pencil icon right next to them. You can click that if you want to edit them. And down at the bottom, you'll see options to create new categories or attributes if you need to do that. And that brings us to our next tip, which is somewhat related. And then that involves importing requirements. And the reason it's related is because you, when you import, uh, you can choose to update your schema with attributes that don't already exist. So let's look at an Excel spreadsheet we'll import. And you'll see that the title and description, they already exist in iRise. So we'll just map those over. But functional, phase, and type, they don't exist. So for those, we'll create new attributes. And if we go ahead and import these, 
you'll see that those attributes were created. So if you've already got requirements in an Excel spreadsheet, or you want to create a few for importing, you can use this as a shortcut for updating your schema. So now let's talk about creating custom requirements views in iRise. This is an important part of managing your user stories and requirements, but I think that because when you start a new project, there's obviously no requirements to manage and no views to set, it's not immediately obvious how you create views. But it's actually really simple and intuitive once you understand the basics. So first, let's look at some custom views that I've already got set up. And the views here are on the left. And you'll see that I've got a view that shows my epics. And the columns are broken down by face. And I've got a priority system. I've got a view that shows the outstanding issues. And the columns here break down by risk. And I've also got rows showing the breakdown by impact. And I've got a view for each phase of the project and also a scrum view. So to create these, it's actually very simple. What you do is you use the attributes in your project, things like priority and type and status, or any attribute for that matter that you decide to include in your project. You use those to create custom filters. And you'll see those custom filters at the top of each view in the search box. And then up at the top right, you can also set the columns and rows to break down things even further. So let's go ahead and create a view. I'm going to start off with an existing view here, and I'm going to delete the existing filters. And if we click into a requirement, we'll see all the attributes that we have to choose from. So maybe I want to set up a view that shows everything in the backlog um, that's set to to do, and where the priority is set to must have or should have. And we also want to view whether the impact is low, medium, or high. So in the search box, let's start and type the attribute backlog. And once we do, we'll see a number of options. We'll set it to filter by backlog. And once you do that, you'll see a bunch of variables here to choose from. And we want to show everything that is in the backlog where it equals to do. Now that we've got that filter working, let's set one up for priority where it equals must have or should have. And now for our columns, let's set them to break down by impact. And now we've got a nice custom view where we can see our to-do backlog items of high priority, and we've sorted them by impact. And we can go ahead and take this a few steps further. Maybe we want to show the risk on each card. So I'll type risk and select show. And now on each card, it's going to show the risk. And we can even color each card. So let's color here by cost. So if I type in cost and select color, we'll get an indication of low, medium, and high costs. So now we just rename the view and save it as a new view. And that's it. A few other quick tips I'll mention regarding views. One is that you can also keyword search the title or the title and description in the search box. You just type in the keyword and click enter. Also, as you move a requirement from one column to another, it's going to update the attributes related to that column or row. So as an example, if I move this item from the must have column to the should have column, it's going to update that attribute to should have. And this feature can be really helpful as you're discussing issues in a meeting and reprioritizing them. Next, I want to quickly talk about creating user stories in iRise. Uh, I sometimes get asked about the best way to do this, so I thought I'd talk about it a bit. I've actually seen this done a few different ways, and I think it just depends on your preference and the way your project works. Uh, the first way is just to capture them in the title itself. So you click on title and as a, I want, so that I can, and so on and so forth. And I personally think this is the best option because you can see the entire user story when you're viewing your cards in your different views here in Manager. One of the other ways I've seen them is to capture them in the description. So the title may just be a brief summary and then the description will have a longer user story there. 
And then I've also seen uh, a user story category created, as you see here. And then a different attribute can be created for the three parts of the user story. And what I've done here is I've added some default content for each attribute just to give the user a, um, a guide for creating their user story. But when they click in there, they delete that and then create their user story. But again, my, my personal preference and recommendation is that you use the title to capture them. And it's probably the easiest way to view them in bulk and then manage them in, in Manager. So for this last tip, um, another quick one here. I get a lot of questions about creating public projects. And to do this, you need a team or enterprise plan, first of all. So if you go to the Share tab, and up on the right, you'll see a drop down. And here, the default is going to be private. So that's going to be selected. But if I change this to public, you'll see you get two link options. And you'll have both a public and a private link that you can copy. The private link is going to require a login, and the public won't. Uh, although if, if you do give send someone a, a public link, it will ask them for their name and email if they want to leave a comment in the prototype so that you can track who is leaving feedback and, and trace it back to them. So that's it for this second in the series of tips and tricks webinars for iRise. Please feel free to let us know what topics you'd like to see in future webinars. You can do that through the uh, chat feature on our website or in the product, or send us an email at info at So thanks for joining us today. Have a great day and take care.